Hi there, this is Ron Rogers, and I want to talk about some of the early issues with ground proximity warning systems. Uh, initially, the systems were somewhat unreliable. Now, this is a little bit of tongue-in-cheek look at that early system and reliability function, so um, please be aware of that. And the one thing I want to point out is one of our early pilots developed a checklist. Now, this is Don Bateman. Don Bateman developed ground proximity warning systems back in the 60s, and he is credited with probably saving more lives than any one single individual. So this is to do no discredit against him. It's a little humorous look at a, a checklist a guy developed. But uh, Don Bateman developed a amazing system. I had several uh, meetings with him. I worked with ALPA and uh, flew on a test flight where we're looking at that time the uh, obstacle uh, part. Now, ground proximity GPWS became enhanced GPWS and they added in obstacles and predictive uh, maps and stuff where they had the uh, terrain database, but the early system didn't have that and because of that it had some issues. Another thing, and I'll attach this paper at the end, because in there I talk about uh, with, the, with various flight control systems, including the 727, but with various flight control systems, especially uh, the fly-by-wire systems, the ability <clears throat> to avoid uh, terrain encounters, unplanned terrain encounters, is really enhanced. And in fact, at the time, the airlines were not fully taking advantage of the uh, capability of Airbus aircraft in uh, performance. Now, the 727 was one of the first very high-performance aircraft that came uh, out of the straight-wing DC-6s uh, and things like that, and there were transition issues, but the, the 727 could be flown quite aggressively and uh, could could encounter some very, uh, very high descent rates that could be, um, you know, corrected, because we always like to say there was no approach that couldn't be salvaged. But here's the basic, uh, that little red arrow shows the, uh, the GPWS warning there. And the system, uh, the early ones, it simply operated off the radar altimeter. Now, you guys uh, that are flying now know about um, the, uh, the terrain database, and that is a super improvement. But early on, it just looked straight down with the radar altimeter. It had a lot of functions, uh, basically excessive descent rate, ex excessive terrain closure, uh, if you descended on a takeoff or go around, um, general unsafe terrain, things like this. But it didn't have the predictive capability that the modern aircraft now have, where um, it's not just looking straight down. It's actually telling you that, um, you know, <clears throat> if you don't get your act together, you're going to come into some terrain. It gives you the predictive warning, which is very important. Back <clears throat> in the day, it would just give you the pull up, pull up. So basically, you could be headed straight towards the mountain, and as long as you had plenty of terrain below you, um, there were a few accidents, uh, military and civilian, where um, they flew into the side of a mountain, um, because you wouldn't necessarily get a lot of warning. Now, one of the, the more famous uh, GPWS encounters had to do with an Avianca uh, 747 back in 1980. Four. It was an Aviana Flight 011 going into Madrid, and uh, they were they were cleared uh, for the uh, the runway 33 approach, and instead of turning right at the Madrid VOR, they initiated the turn short of the beacon, and they got below the uh, minimum altitude in that area. Well, the uh, they got the GPWS warning, and uh, um, it was going you know pull up, pull up, and there's a famous quote, you may you may have heard this before, where um, the captain says, shut up, gringo, shut up, gringo. Well, unfortunately, he should have listened to the gringo because they ended up uh, crashing into the mountain. The, um, <clears throat> the uh, plane uh, 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 cartwheel broke into several pieces. Um, there were uh, only 11 of 169 passengers survived. All uh, 23 of the crew were killed, and uh, obviously uh, it was not a good outcome. So one of our pilots developed a checklist that covered a lot of eventualities and kind of helped the crew work through um, what may have been, you know, a, a, a false 
GPWS warning or a warning they should not be necessarily that much concerned about at the time. And I'll go through, uh, there are quite a, quite a few trees here, if you can see. I'll go through just a couple of them. Okay, let's take a look at the first one with the green arrow. Okay, you get the uh, whoop whoop pull up, and it's, uh, are you still taxing? And it's, yes, ignore and continue with the newspaper. Okay, now let's look at a more serious situation where uh, that's following the red arrow there. Um, are you still taxing? No. Okay. Are you on takeoff run? Well, if it's yes, then we go back to the green arrow and uh, just uh, you've just run over a hole in the runway and don't, you know, uh, ignore and continue with your newspaper. Now going back uh, down the red, are you on the takeoff? Uh, are you on the takeoff run? And the answer is no. Then you go, are you climbing? And if the answer is yes, did you forget the SID turn at 500 feet? Okay, well, let's just, let's just look at the, uh, the more critical avenue here uh, where you say yes. And it's, oh dear, you're in deep trouble now. And then it goes on. Are you a management pilot? Uh, no. Okay, are you a training captain? And if you answer yes, you go over to the box that says no, not anymore. Uh, scribble out a resignation to the uh, flight training people. And then uh, push the levers into ICAS. Squash your beer gut with a control column and try not to panic. Okay, now, uh, then this goes down to how quickly did you react, okay? If you react slowly, hit the ground. Quickly, hit the ground. Fairly quickly, still hit the ground. Like flaming lightning, then the situation is over, you have recovered. And of course, at your leisure, you may look at uh, a number of these trees. But anyway, this was an, a little bit official uh, look at humor on... Um, some scenarios where you might not uh, get the most reliable enhanced GPWS warning. But like I said, Don Bateman has probably saved more lives than anybody in history. And the system now is, uh, you know, if, if you get a round rocks warning, you had better adhere to it or you're in deep trouble. And like I said, you can look at the paper and see about um, the ways that the fly-by-wire uh, control... <coughs> enhances your ability to recover, especially, especially with the Airbus. Um, uh, but in the beginning, uh, my airline actually wasn't following the Airbus procedure, and they were using a procedure trying to standardize it, but the procedure, the standardized procedure, was not taking uh, advantage of the capabilities of the aircraft. And I went into the chief pilot's office, um, and I said, hey, here's this paper. This is what we did. Uh, we're not doing it, you know, to the best of our ability. And he says... It's a good idea. I'll change that. And I'm going, what? I mean, mo most of the time when you take something to a manager, uh, you have to present it like 12 different times. And they once they finally agree it's their idea, they go ahead with it. But he, j Doug just said right away, yeah, good idea. Let's do that. All right. That's a little bit about ground proximity warning systems, a little bit of history there, a little tongue-in-cheek here and there, but I hope you found it interesting, entertaining, and historically, possibly even slightly factual. Thanks for watching.